Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Raven Hot Coins and the Thursday night live stream. Tonight, we're having some fun. We are searching dimes. And uh, something happened on my screen. Give me just a sec, guys. Uh, too funny here. Um, I just went with a simple thing because we're just going to have some fun. I didn't put any tears or anything up there. I want to see what we find in a box. I uh, want to say hello to Derek McCullough. How you doing, Derek? And Silver Travis. Travis. Then we have Pro Slice 56 as well as the right channel, Joshua Wright in the house with Bob's Coins. How you doing, Bob? Good to see you. What's up, Christine Kuwait? Very cool. Hey, look, we did all right in the heist. So what I'm going to do tonight, like I said, this is just going to be for fun. Um, I wanted to uh, hang out with you guys and talk a little bit. What's up, Dizzy's Giraffes? How you doing, Dizzy? We got Vicky C of the fam in the house, everybody. Good to see Vicky C right on. What's up, Josh Cravens? So, yeah, we're just going to hang out and uh, search some dimes. And, um, you know, talk a little. And then next Thursday, I'm going to figure out kind of something, a tier that's going to be fair to, fair to everybody and whatnot. So very, very cool. What's up? Whitney Balls sent me an email about Isaac and Chunky Butt. Right on, Whitney. I'll have to check that out. Good to see you. We got Canadian Ryan in the house as well as Weedman77 and Fran Norman. How you doing, Fran? All right. So we're going to crack this box open. And here's the thing with dimes, you really, really, uh, Bob's Coins wants to buy some dime, dime rolls. Well, Bob, um, I mean, I guess if you insist, we could figure something out, but I was just going to do this for fun tonight. What's up, Mike the Greek? How you doing? Trapstar003. Oh, I would love to see Mercs come out. Very, very cool. So we have somebody named Maximus Silverstacker. They're looking to get to 500 subs. Right on. Give them a look, guys. You know how I am. I do not have a problem with supporting people and helping them grow. So very cool there. All right. So I don't see anything that's obvious in these enders. But, um, you know, usually with dimes, you're not really going to find too much that often. Um, they're very well known to be silver, and they're picked through and whatnot. Oh, yeah, I was just keeping this one under the scope. It's a cool little toned one that I found the other day and uh, didn't even know I had it. So it's kind of cool. What's up, trucking for silver? How you doing? Very, very cool to see you guys. But, yeah, you know, I just wanted to come in, have some fun, hang out, have something that's a little less uh, regimented, and see how you guys are doing, how your week is gone and as well if you uh, are having a good week uh, Maximus Silverstacker won the third channel Easter oh okay one third prize in the Easter giveaway that's really cool Weasel 63 what's up Ken Porter how you doing good to see everybody here so what we'll do is we'll look through this and you know hopefully we find something matter of fact something's dark right here and uh the one thing with dimes is you want to look for errors and stuff. Well, that's just a 72 that's beat up. It looked dark from the side. Dimes are so tiny that trying to look at them with my bare eyes at times is a little much. Um, you know, a lot of times I look along the sides and silver will stick out like a sore thumb. I mean, I can show you by putting one in here. That if you know you had silver, you'd see that that white shows up pretty nice. But um, that's for illustration purposes only. <laughs> so very, very cool. See you guys here. Let's see. We have a 2018. That one's really nice looking. You know, and here's the thing. With Roosevelt's, you can find some cool stuff if you really, really pay attention to detail. Um, there's been a lot of people that have found some interesting errors. Um, a lot of times it has to do with extra leaves or extra parts of the torch. Um, when you're looking at a dime and you want to know that it's BU, it's like a lot of other things. You, you know, you want to make sure the fields are clean. 
and there's no dings or scratches or whatnot. What's up, Justin Clark? How you doing, Alicia Ortiz, Linda Schaefer in the house. Uh, Trapstar said the kids started school yesterday, so mornings have been kind of hectic. Other than that, how about myself? I'm doing pretty good, my friend, pretty good. Um, life is good. Today was a good day, and, um, you know, I had a lot of stuff going on. That's why we got a little bit of a late start, but very cool to have you guys here in here. And what I was trying to tell you guys is, you know, with dimes, you can find things. But I'm like, like I said, you got to be very, very detail oriented. And one of the key things to dimes is the torch. And let me see here. I'm going to find a little bitty stick or something real quick to show you what I'm talking about. And I know that there's a good amount of people in the chat room that know what they're looking at for dimes. But, you know, if somebody stumbles onto the stream or whatnot, sees it later, they'll have a little bit of an idea. So what you're looking for in here. What's up, Peter Bowes? How you doing, Peter? Good to see you. What up, Bradley Schultz? Bradley says, we be rolling. <laughs> um, when you're looking at the torch, this spot right here where it goes across horizontally, you want that to be a, a nice defined, defined line. And then the same thing with the other spot on the little end of the torch. The reason I turned it around is sometimes with these microscopes, the lights will mess with you. So here you can see it goes all the way through. And then you have the vertical bands as well. So in a Roosevelt, you want that to be very, very cool if you can find it. Uh, 96W dimes are sneaky. That's funny. Trapstar says, do I have my goggles on? Yeah, no doubt, my friend. JP Hatchet, yo, 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 yo. What's up, JP? Anthony Murphy, how you doing, man? Good to see you guys. Um, so that's one of the key things you're looking for in a BU dime. Uh, with Roosevelt's, like I said, if you can find the errors, you definitely want to get yourself a um, cherry picker's guide because there's a lot of errors that don't show up in the red book that are in that so that you can find some really cool stuff that way too. What's up, Jeremy Albritton? How you doing, my friend? Um, so this right here, you know, is a 2018 Denver. It looks really, really nice. If I was wanting to put something in a book, I might pull this aside. But I see a couple little issues on the face. There's a couple little bag dings and whatnot. But uh, and see right there, and then right under God we trust, we got the little circle of death. So <laughs> that one's a no go. And I need a little box. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> to throw dimes in as we go I wish there would be silver guys but I'm thinking that the our best chances are probably gonna be something like a modern key date like 2009 or whatnot because honestly these things are so tiny you know so what have you guys been searching lately uh, Trapstar 003, I would not be surprised. If silver goes over 20, I'm going to have to think of something uh, in the sense to revamp the tier a little bit because then that will be a $6, $7 rise an ounce in silver. And, uh, you know, that's a pretty big chunk to jump. But it is cool to see that, you know, that, that silver is getting that popularity and whatnot. And... Um, Let's see, do we see anything extra? Um, also with dimes, sometimes you find doubling in the words, but because of their size, it's it's deceptive, you know, especially when you have it magnified like this. So I'm just going to go through here. We got a 1996 Denver. I don't see a W there. <laughs> Checking for silver, September 12th, 6 p.m., having a special stream to celebrate his birthday and everybody's invited there will be giveaways every 15 minutes very cool JP hatchet searching dimes as well very very cool hey guys Cajun coin hunter doing a fundraiser for rogue silver who's going through a very difficult time seven-year-old son has cystic fibrosis and he's out of work with a bad shoulder please help wow that's a lot my friend you guys got some Whew. 
Crazy, crazy, crazy stuff going on there. Start throwing half ounce coins in the mix at that all. <laughs> Uh, searching two boxes of cents as we speak, says Anthony Murphy. Really cool, man. Oops. I almost closed something out on accident there. All right, so let's see. 97D. Hey, Tarpley Adventures. What's going on, Tarpley? How you doing? We're just having a night hanging out, seeing if we find anything cool. We haven't found any silver, but we just started a couple minutes ago looking through dimes. Wanted to hang out with my people, make it a fun night. Not every time that I sign on to uh, live stream and stuff and hang out am I expecting to make something, you know, from people. I, I like to give back, and I also like to have fun hanging out with you guys when I can and tonight I had a little bit of time and I'm going to be streaming on Thursdays and I'm going to figure out some tiers that make it fair make it fun and uh, dimes and other denominations we might do quarters next looking to find some uh, W's 2019 W's would be nice I still have not found any in quarter boxes yet uh, Silver Maximus says he's skunked on a box of has and he's doing quarters next you know the the haves have been nice to us lately we've been doing very very well and uh it's a 1982 d not too bad what's up jason thomas saying silver yes guys i would love to find some silver I'm looking through these bad boys to see if there's anything special and honestly with dimes it's a hard find if you do find something cool you know you, you'll find it in streaks in California I actually found um, a bunch of mercury dimes about a year and a half ago what up Maria Cervantes good to see Maria tonight here's a really nice looking 2018 Denver now if I was filling a hole in a book I'd put this in there you know, I mean, Roosevelt Dimes, the value on them, it's pretty even across the board. You know, it's Mercury's and older that really have key dates to them. Mer Roosevelt, you're looking more for errors and just the silver as well. And you might find something good, you know. Um, I know Rob Finds Treasures found some pretty good stuff in Dimes recently. So not too shabby. Hey, there's a 1968. That's in fairly decent shape for being in circulation that long and being a small coin. Dimes wear out, um, in my opinion, kind of fast. You know, they're so tiny. You get a lot of this kind of wearing that you see right here on the edge of this 85P, which this one, I don't know. It might not have had much of an edge to begin with. I still feel the reading, so that's kind of cool. Maximus Stacker, can you explain the satin finish on some of the half dollars I'm looking at tonight? Two nineteen ninety three right now with that weird satin finish. Uh, Maximus, what's the uh, mint mark on it? If it's an S, then that would make sense. Uh, satin finish would mean it would be a proof, but only proof come out. Proof coins only come out of San Francisco in modern dates. So that would be, you know, the best explanation, unless they made a mistake and somehow it got out. Um, but that's pretty cool. Let's see what we got here. I think this is a 99. Yeah, 99 Philly. But um, I was seeing if you guys wanted to continue doing dimes further or if quarters was something more interesting. Uh, wanted to basically mix it up a little bit what's up mr dearborn how you doing maria cervantes how are things going in your world my friend really excited for sunday night stream guys we're gonna have a lot of fun um i got my four boxes in today and i have some silver coming on the way from atmex because uh, 
you know, it's a d weekly thing basically to keep this going. You got to keep looking at stuff. You know anything about the 1951 wheat penny where the D mark is almost touching the date? Jason Thomas, no. Um, but that is interesting. I would look in the cherry picker's guide uh, to see if there's something about it. And also, you can ask around in some of the communities because honestly, like I've said in a lot of videos, you don't, uh, you know, not every last thing has been found. So it's interesting to me when sometimes you'll hear people say, oh, that's not going to be found or that's not possible. And then a year or two later, you hear about somebody finding one. And that's honestly because, you know, there are unique finds still to be out there. And maybe you found something neat, unique. I don't know every last rare coin out there, but I try to keep up on these things. All right, we got a 1966. Let's see how the back looks. See, this is not something I would put in a book because it doesn't have anything close to a full torch. So, so what I was saying earlier about the value of... Um, dimes is you basically are going to get your best value the more perfect the dime is when it comes to silver or whatnot when you're dealing with Roosevelt's when you get into Mercury's then you get more things that have key dates and some really cool stuff uh, if it's close to the date it's not uncommon but if it's really close jagged yeah that's that's the thing it depends on how like Bob said, how close the mint mark is to the, the dating on it. That makes complete sense. All right, 2017. What's up there? Pro Slice hanging out. Anthony Murphy. Well, I know that depending on some coins, like here's, here's a thing that I'll show you guys that I have. Um, on this 75 nickel, this one's actually considered a variety because you see how high that mint mark is and it's touching the five almost and it's almost touching the hair. That's considered the ultra high D and I found that coin roll hunting and honestly, you know, you got to pay a lot of attention to what you're looking at. Detail is key. That's why dimes is such a hard, hard search. You know, you got to have really good eyes for one. Oh, wow. Maximus was a postal window clerk for 20 years. Silver dimes is what turned up most of the rolls from customer change. That's pretty cool, man. Very cool. All right. So let's see here. We got the next roll open. And a couple of these, I'm just going to look at the edges. And see if we have anything that stands out. Something that has a darker edge might be silver. And sometimes I can't even read the date on that one. And I have pretty good eyes. That's a 99, so no silver there. But, you know, you know silver by looking at it. It has that very white look to it. But I've had times where you'll have a really, really dark rim on the coin or, you know, edge. And, uh it be silver so you gotta keep your eyes open you gotta look for the discrepancies and what you know to be a perfect coin and kinda go from there <laughs> can a person with no eyebrows? no trap star if you had no eyebrows that would be hard <laughs> healing coin hunter said dimes are really hard Yes, my friend. That's why more than likely, you know, the best thing to do is slide it under the scope. You just never know what you're going to get. You just never know. Good to see Canadian Ryan here. What's up, Canadian Ryan? How's the weather up in Canada? Eh? I was thinking about you in the uh, last penny hunt I did because there was a Canadian... 1974 Canadian penny that came through. I was like, what's up? Hey, what's up, penny dog? How you doing? All righty. So nothing new going on, guys. You guys got a... 
any good movies out there? I saw that movie Venom. That was a pretty good movie. I was actually surprised. It was pretty funny. And uh, hopefully they'll make more. Tom Hardy's a really good actor, man. And uh, so a couple of these I'm going to breeze through. I'm really just looking for silver tonight. If I sit there and try to, uh, you know, go through every dime, we're, we're all going to go cross-eyed. <laughs> but if I see something that sticks out or looks cool, I'll share it. Like, this is kind of neat. I like, I like dirty coins. They have character. Well, oh, wow. Look at that on his nose, guys. Check that out. Holy cow, does that not look, that doesn't look like damage, that looks like a little bitty, well, I mean, not po not post-mint, that looks like that could have happened in the mint, that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Not even September and it's feeling like fall, well, it's warm here in Oklahoma. It is toasty, even when it cools down. The humidity keeps you kind of sweaty, but, uh, you know, what can you do? And that goes to the point of you got to really look at every coin out there, guys, because that's kind of cool. Actually, you know what? Now that I look at it more, I bet you that's a little little divot from a, a rock or something. <laughs> I thought it was something cool for a second, but, uh, yeah, Scarface Dime. It's a zit. <laughs> See, sometimes the way that it magnifies it, it can fool you a little. You know, I'll look at it and go, oh, I think that's something. And then I look at it a little bit longer and I'm like, no, nah, that's post-mint damage. And that's one of the things about dimes. They're so small and detailed for how tiny a coin they are, but a real pain in the butt <laughs> when you're looking at them with your bare eyes. But what do you do? Hey, we got a 2019. Look at that. Bing. That's kind of cool. I didn't think I'd find a 2019. I'd like to find some 2009s, you know what I mean? Oh, man. See, that's a bummer. Tom Hardy's got a lot of stuff going on. He's also got another show named uh, Taboo which is pretty good and you know hey Bill Gibson what's up brother good to see you Jason Thomas would you send a box of coins if paid from your area um, you know what Jason it depends you know I might be able to work something out boxes of coins are really heavy so people get pretty surprised when they see what the shipping that's associated with a box is. But, um, you know, you never know. I might I might be tempted. Uh, look at this. This looks like something interesting. Wow, this is a 2015. And this thing had a really thick rim, so I thought it might be a proof. But nope, it's a business strike. Kind of a trip. Good to see Bill here. Bill rocks. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> yeah, Bill, just wanted to have fun. You know, wanted to come in, have a time with you guys. Something that's not too stressful. Just hang out. You know, um, Sunday we're going we're gonna to rock the house. It's going to be a lot of fun. We got our boxes of Habs already in and really, really hoping that we hit silver again. We've been doing pretty well. This last week, we hit some Benjis, and the week before, man, insane, we got the Barber, and uh, I really hope that continues, you know? But the thing with looking at dimes again, like I said before, guys, is if you're not looking at every single coin and really spending time, you're going to miss stuff, you know? Um... Especially when you have errors and whatnot that you want to look at on the dimes. They're so subtle at times that something that you would see on a nickel or a penny, it doesn't stand out as uh, obvious on dimes in the same way. 
Nice. 2009 Puerto Rican and Guam quarters. Two rolls. I have, uh, in nickels, I have a couple of rolls of 2009s now for my nickel searches. And I had that 2009 streak went for almost the entire two years of being a channel. And then the streak was broken, but the streak is now back. So I'm hoping that continues because I've managed to get, like I said, uh, two rolls saved up. And um, I like them. <laughs> Silver Bugle says, my eyes aren't even good enough to search times. Yeah, I, I feel you there. I can still read them. But to really, really know what's going on with them, like if there's any issues, I'm going to use a scope all day long. Strains the retinas. Yes, that's for sure. I made a joke in a video that I searched dimes a while back that I said my eyes were bleeding when I got done. Because it's, uh, it's one of those things, you know. Alrighty. I also got some stuff that I think I didn't um I don't think I've ever had for the show before so that'll be really cool for Sunday night a, a new company the nine fine or whatever fine nine mint um, they have some stuff that came out and I got my hands on a little bit so I'm pretty stoked about that Penny Dogs on 7 of a 12-day beach vacation and ready to be home. Yeah, you know, sometimes you end up needing a vacation from your vacation. <laughs> you know, um, when I take trips, I try to work in some rest time, you know, a day or two to be home before I start going back into full swing with life because, man, it's a lot of fun to uh, go have fun. But then when you get back and you're so tired from a change in, you know, the uh, time zones or, and whatnot, traveling is pretty, pretty stressful. What's up, Casey Red Dragon? Chasing the gold. What's up, Chasing the gold? How you seeing? Budget Coin Hunter. When machine doubling happens, the die hits again and the flat part squishes the first strike a little bit. Yep, yep. What up, Lady B? How you doing? Good to see you. Uh, Ch Casey Red Dragon, no, we have not found any silver yet. We've just been hanging out and chatting away. Oh, look, we got a kind of a cool-looking little tone dime here. This is interesting. I wish the, uh, scope would do it more justice and that you could see the toning better. But scopes and cameras don't always pick that up in the best way. And the reverse looks really nice. This is pretty much a full torch. So that's not a bad looking little coin. What's up, David Chestnut? How you doing? We got Chasing the Gold hanging out. Maria Cervantes here. Fran Norman. Bob's Coins. Vicky C of the fam. Canadian Ryan. Canadian Ryan is the man, guys. He's a good dude. Uh, Maximus Silverstacker says, I had a regular customer come into the post office, bought a book of stamps at the time. I think it was six bucks for a book and he paid with Benji's. Wow. Told him that, do you want to do that? Those are silver. Yeah, you know, I had a, oh, that's cool. He said he knew it was a gift for you. That's way cool. I, um, I had a friend that owned a liquor store. And over the years, his family, because people come in and, hey, can I trade you this silver for stuff? And, you know, the family say, oh, okay, and they put it aside. Or they would just get it in, you know, payment just for even regular customers. And when silver was at like 30-something dollars an ounce, um, you know, it had gotten up to 50 a long time ago. But it was still at about 34 bucks or something like that an ounce. He wanted to get rid of it. Well, he didn't know about the price of silver. And uh, he was going to sell me the whole stack for real cheap. And I just, 
I said, you know what, I can't do that. I'm, I'm going to let you know that the price is this. And he made a lot of money off of that, guys. I mean, because they had huge five-ounce silver pandas and stuff, you know, from way back when the pandas started out, um, as well as a lot of cool older uh, collector stuff that he didn't realize key dates and stuff were in there. I never looked at the whole thing. He just showed me a box of silver and said, Hey, you can have it for like 150 bucks. And I said, well, you know, I would love to do that to you, but I know that that's way more than 150 bucks in silver, what I can see in that box. And, yeah, he did really well. Have I ever found a W dime? No, I have not found a W dime. That would be pretty amazing, actually. Uh, West Point dime. I know that there was one made. I think it's, I think it is a '96, but I'm not 100% sure offhand. But um, I know that the W dime was made special for a certain reason. I forgot why, but I know I've read about it before. Found two '68 halves at Wells Fargo on the honeymoon in Delaware. Nice. <laughs> That's too cool. Love finding the silver at face value. And you know, it's interesting how often you'll find tellers and stuff, or bank employees, they know what silver is, and a lot of them don't even want to deal with it. They just say, hey, you know, if you want it, you can have it. <laughs> it's kind of funny. All right, found another 2019. That's a good-looking dime. I like modern... Uh, machining for coins the faces look so realistic it's actually surprising you know there you go that would have a let me see if that has a full torch I gotta turn it the other way to see yep that would have a full torch um, so if you're wanting to put something in a book that's something you'd want to have let's see Do -do -do -do. these are so tiny guys are killing me <laughs> I think this is like self torture. I, I I must like beating myself up. We got ninety nine or ninety six Philly, looking pretty nice. Every mint all years. Yeah, you gotta get on the inside with a teller or a bank manager. Developing relationships is key, guys. I mean, because think about it. If you worked in the bank, even though you know what you're looking for, look at that maximum four lols. Nice. Um, you're working in the bank, you're looking for silver and stuff too because you're stacking or, you know, you're a collector. And so these people come in and they just want something for nothing. And some people want you to, you know, earn your stripes or at least if they know you find good stuff, at least give them something every once in a while, you know? Oh, wow. That's very cool. Silver Bugle said they have a dump bank with an auto sorter. Might start doing some coin roll hunting. Yeah, coin roll hunts are fun. Omega Shadow says I have none of any kind of coin collection books out there, not yet. OC Omega Shadow, well then, you know, you got to start, my buddy. What's up, Golf Star 66 How you doing, my friend? Good to see you. Let's see. This is an interesting looking one here. Just a 1979. It's a little bit worn. I thought I saw something there. But, but yeah, um, Jason Thomas. So, you know, you want to develop relationships. You want to start off and, and be honest. There's been a lot of uh, times that when I've gone searching coins in other cities and whatnot I just uh, tell them straight out hey I'm coin roll searching and can I buy a box of coins and a lot of times they'll let you do it what's up Rockzilla and Jim how you doing Jim very very cool and so one of the things is if you're going to a bank quite frequently Find out what they like, you know. I will find out if they're more of a bagel crowd or a donut crowd or if they like fruits and vegetables. 
And then from time to time, I will bring him in a tray of fruits or I'll bring him ba bagels or whatever their likes are. Um, in San Diego, a lot of times they wanted fruit trays or veggie trays. But uh, here they they like the cupcakes and um, one of them likes cupcakes. The other one likes donuts. And, you know, I mix it up from time to time. But I also make sure that I cognize it and uh, bring them some milk to go along with it. You know, that extra little step goes a long way. Joseph Worrell, are you have a great day? Have a great day. <laughs> Right on. OC Omega has a couple wheat pennies. Cool, man. Those are a little bit more common years, but hey, still cool to have them in your collection. And everybody starts somewhere. You can't always, you know, start from the top. It's best to also take some time when you're starting out and figure out how to focus on maybe one or two coins, uh, you know, to get the sets. Because you'll be surprised, key dates in certain coins, it'll be really rough. Like Mercury Dimes, you know, those 1916s are going to hurt you quite a bit, the D and the S, uh, as far as price. Oh, we got something here in the 60s, but I don't think, ah, oh, it's a 65. Wah, wah, wah. So we did not get any silver there. I saw the 6. I thought there might be something cool. Just looking here, 1992 Denver. Two go. OC Omega Shadow. But um, the other thing is look in your local city. A lot of times there'll be a coin group where you can go and hang out and learn from the older guys. You know what's going on. A lot of times they have little small coin shows. And you can win some cool stuff. What up, Rockzilla, dude? How you doing, brother? Good to see you. What's up, Dirty Nichols? What up, Don? How you doing, man? It's been a while. It's been a while. What up, NCF? Wooster. Wooster. Very cool. Thanks, Mr. Dirty Nichols. Just having some fun, brother. Glad you could get in. Glad you could get in. But, um... It's been a while since I found dime... Or dimes. Since I found silver in dimes. Um, I've done a couple searches here and there. And they just haven't been hitting. Um... But I've seen some people have been doing really good, you know. And I think a lot of that has to do with that Great American Coin Cert or Coin Hunt. I think, honestly, the people, the dealers and whatnot that put coins out in circulation really did put out a good assortment because I've seen things I've never seen before come through. And that's like the barber, you know, that blew my mind. Look at this, guys. This is a really nice looking 2017. Minimal issues, you know, it's got some dings here and there, but you got to remember when you're what's up, Deborah Walls? How you doing? Um, you got to remember when you're looking through the coin uh, at the coin scope here. I always got to remember it's a different spot. When you're looking at the coin scope, that is magnified way more intensely than what they would use in a jeweler's loop. So, you know, sometimes people are a little bit over judgmental on a coin. When they look at it under a scope, and that's just one of the things you got to remember, is a scope will pick up things that aren't looked at, and that's what the measurement they use when they grade a coin. They use the ten by, uh, you know, ten power magnification, is what is used to do grading. And I'm sorry if I sound repetitive or or whatnot, but I'm trying to make sure I get the right point across. That you know, coin scopes are great. But, but you really want to use a jeweler's loop if you want to know if you have the right thing. Hey, Stephen Jones, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Welcome to the show. What up, G-Dub? Lady B said, ooh, that's a keeper. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I, I probably tossed it back in the 
in the bucket, Lady B, but that was a nice looking coin. Um, it'd be nice to find some something foreign. I found some cool foreign stuff in dimes before. Here's something from the 60s. It's not going to be a 64. It is a 66. Hmm. All right. So, in a couple days, we'll be announcing the winners of the August giveaway. And then we will have the September giveaway. And that is going to be a lot of fun. But the real fun, and I'm just going to kind of uh, put it out there but not say what it is. But October, October this year, this Halloween, we have some fun, fun stuff going on. Digging Dave just did a video, found some war nickels, but he pulled out a 41 in stellar shape. Huh. All right. Have to check it out. Digging Dave normally comes in and uh, plugs his channel when I'm streaming. Uh, I know he did a dime search recently and found some good stuff. And uh, he was really happy. I think he said he found some Mercury's. But I honestly, when I find silver and dimes, I'm just shocked. <laughs> silver Bugle going to go metal detecting, hoping to find some good stuff. You know what I would like to do is do some gold searching. That would be fun. Some panning or whatnot. Uh, Bill Gibson, can I raise the max in the relic raid? Yeah, sure. Hold on a second. Let me... Uh... Let me get in here and see what I can do. This is mini games. Uh, Relic raid, max amount. All right, I'm going to say max amount's 8,000. All right. So there we go. Let me go back and make sure it saved it. Yep. All right, Bill Gibson. Because you asked, you're at 8,000 maximum, my friend. Everybody can now do something cool. And uh, let me see here. I missed something by Jason Thomas. A 1924 plus a 1933 Canadian one cent. Very cool, man. I have a really old one cent Canadian sitting here. Matter of fact, there was somebody in the community that said they really needed this year, but I can't remember who it was. But this is a 1921 Canadian that I've had on the desk here for quite a while. This is a cool little coin. 1921. All right. So let's get back into the dime find. So far, nothing. <laughs> what up, Stephen Jones? How you doing? Gregory Lee, brother, how you doing? What up, Captain Kirk? In the house. Scotty, I just need to be beamed aboard. All right, let's see here. You know, I found out something the other day that blew my mind. One of my closest friends in the world, somebody that I care about and trust dearly, has never seen the movie Star Wars ever. I was just in utter shock, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, guys. 1980. Oh, <laughs> I was going to tell you guys. I, I had bought some wheat pennies the other day from Atmex and was sorely disappointed. I didn't do a video on it because I don't really feel like bashing um, the company too much because Atmex treats me really well. And they treat the, the community as a whole really well. I just think I got a bad batch of pennies. But it was literally nothing older than 1940. Which, you know, when it says on there random from this, this year to year, this year, I'm not expecting to cherry pick anything spectacular like an SBDB. I don't think that would ever happen. But, but nothing older than 1940 killed me. Wait, Joseph Worrells hasn't seen it? Oh, man, Joseph. <laughs> and, I, and so, yeah, but 
but I'm going to try to at some point, one day when I get to hang out with this person, I'm going to make them watch Star Wars with me because I think that'd be fun. Ashes C4 saw it when it came out in 78. Ashes, yep. It's a good movie, man. Good movie. Alrighty. I'm I'm surprised, you know, because Star Wars is such a iconic movie, but I have run into people that haven't watched it. It's just this person, I don't know, I just really thought that uh they would have watched Star Wars, but it comes to find out that they prefer Star Trek, which I understand. Star Trek's a good show. I like both shows, actually. Oh, we got a 67 here. It's got kind of a thick side rim, but nothing to see. Look at that. It's got the little double rim action. You see this a lot in dimes. JP says, I stopped dating a girl because she refused to watch Star Wars. <laughs> Heck, my animals are named Solo, Chewie, and Lando. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny, JP. Because uh, I have a friend of mine that has literally multiple rooms of his house dedicated to Star Wars. And he has really, really cool stuff, guys. I'm talking like lightsabers that were used in the uh, in the movies, you know, because they use multiple lightsabers, but he's got a couple of them. He's got a full size uh, Darth Maul. And there's a story actually behind him getting the Darth Maul. We all went to school together and we knew how much that this guy enjoyed Star Wars. I mean, I love Star Wars, but I don't like it to the point of spending thousands and thousands of dollars on, uh, you know, um, movie props and stuff. But anyways, you know, he had everything, the toys and stuff. So a local Vons had a full size. What's up, Alistair Black? What's up, Penny Queen? Had a full size Darth Maul. This thing's like five foot tall. And uh, we all got together and basically drew our names in there and we made a pack that if anybody won in our group that we would give it to him and sure enough we ended up getting one of our friends drawn and we took it to him and gave it to him for uh, a gift we ended up waiting until Christmas so it was a Christmas gift to him this was really really cool there's a 2000 Denver I thought it was a 2009 for a second it fooled me but that is a really hard one. If you guys are looking through pennies, 2009s are almost as hard to find, or pennies, dimes, 2009s are pretty much as hard to find as silver at times. Oh, and guys. Uh, Casey, nah, not really, you know, I mean, maybe somebody might say it, but I don't, I've never really kept those as heirs. I think it's kind of more common. Um, but not for myself. Some people collect different stuff, you know, you just never know. Mark Hamill lives next door to my aunt, and the aunt is personal assistant to Leonard Nimoy's estate. Wow, that's really cool. J.P. Hatchet, that's interesting, my friend. Who wants to send my me my first silver? <laughs> no, we haven't found any silver yet, my friend. No silver. Dimes are a tough, tough find. But, you know, you do what you do. Um... What was I saying? So, yeah, so he has that uh, big old Darth Maul. It's one of his prized possessions. And people, there's been a couple people that have offered him quite a bit for it. And because it was a gift, he can't. 
Oh, yeah. If it's an uh, Casey, if it's a really good offset, yes. That just kind of had a little bit thicker rim to it, but it wasn't really pushed too high up. You know, um, I look for a little more drastic uh, offset or broad strike. I have a really cool Mercury dime. Um, I don't know if I have it right here. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Oh, Roadhouse. Yeah. That's a fun one. AZ Coins. Yeah. Give me one sec. Let's see here. Oh. Dang it. Nope. It's not in the spot I thought it would be. But I have a Mercury Dime that is broad strength and really, really cool. And then I was going to show you guys something else. When you're looking on Mercury Dimes, if you do not already know what full split bands are, what you're looking for is right here at the top that that goes through, in the middle that goes through, and at the bottom that goes through. This is a very, very nice coin. This, this scuffing you see here isn't the coin itself. It's the package, you know, the, the case. But this is a 19... 42 Denver full band full split bands. This, this is a beauty. I don't like this scope for this reason, but let's see here. You know what's interesting? I think even though this is graded high, if you look on the face, it looks like there's a little like a like a die crack in it. And I'm curious how it would get that good of a grading still, but look at that. It goes all the way through here and up through the hair, and that way I've never seen that before. That is too weird. And it doesn't look like it's part of the case. I mean, am I? Because I move it and it stays in the relatively same place on the coin. Let's see if I go that way. Do we Did it go away? Huh, maybe I'm getting fooled. Eh, anyways, still a cool one. Hey, what's up, Jax Attacks? How you doing, Jax? Good to see you, my friend. Yes, Budget Coin Hunter, that is full split band, my friend. Right there, the, uh, here, I'll show you. Right there, FB, full bands. And when you look at it under here, yes, you can see that it is full split bands all the way. And the horizontal is just as nice. Woohoo! You guys ever seen that old show, Sam, Sam Elliott? Um, Eric Stoltz plays a kid named Rocky who's got this really crazy deformity. shares in it, too. Kind of a trippy movie. I think it's called Mask. AZ Coins, this is graded, my friend. This is a 1942 PCGS MS66. Right there. Boom. King's Coins. Guys, King's Coins finds a lot of W's. There's some people that are just having such good luck with it. And if you didn't see it already, Mickey Rob's Banks, he found a really cool thing. And he's sending me... Uh, one of his finds, he actually is giving me number eight, he said, out of his finds from the Denvers. Um, and if you want to try to get one from him, I know he has it on sale. Yes, The Mask. That movie was a pretty good movie. And um, what's interesting is Sam Elliott plays a biker, and he talks about a philosophy. You know, the lady's like, well, why don't you work? Why don't you this? And he said, well, I made my life. To where I only have to work when I need to. And I always thought that was a pretty interesting way to look at life. Instead of having work kill you and hurt you and take things away. Is if you can put yourself in a position. And I know, you know, not everybody can. But if you can find a way to put yourself in that position. It makes life a little bit easier, a little more fun. Now there's a really nice look in 2019. There's a brand new dime for you there. 
but I don't see anything obvious in here. And like I said, tonight I'm really just trying to see if I can find some silver. Yeah, I don't see anything. What up, Mud Flap? How you doing? Yeah, Cher plays the boy's mother, and I believe the boy is Eric Stoltz. If I'm wrong, I, I'm not sure, but it's a, it's a good movie. Penny Dog says, Amen. <laughs> yeah, you know... Life to me isn't always about trying to make money and, and get the next big thing or squeeze stuff out of people. I enjoy coming around and hanging out with you guys. And this isn't the first time that I've had a stream where I've just hung out. I did one a while back on pennies, but that was quite a while ago. Hey guys, does that look. Does that look. That looks double, doesn't it? I mean, look at that chin. Okay, look at here's a two thousand, right? Guys, I think we got something here. Check that out. It almost looks like another part of the face. Oh, very, very cool. Thank you, Mr. Bill Gibson. What up, Mud Swat? What do you guys think about this dime? I mean, that is some insane detailing because this is a 2000, right? And then you look at this 2019, and this is a brand new coin. And the way his cheek looks here, that is just almost like an, I don't know, that's just weird. Jason Thomas, cool man. You know, Jason, sometimes you gotta um, take a risk, you know, and if you want to get that look there. Oh, this is a nice looking 70. This one's a little off stricken. Uh, King's Coin's been. Sh Searching for them W's. Only found one yesterday. It's all in the numbers. Yes, that is true. Yeah, that chin looks weird. I agree. I want to put that one aside, guys. I think we're going to we're gonna look into that a little more. Because that is almost like two mouths. You know? Two mouths, two chins. But then the rest of the coin doesn't look that crazy. And that's what I said about dimes earlier. The subtle differences that you can see in them but I'm gonna have that one take take a look at all right put that aside see what we got next here's another in the 60s oh no it's an 87 <laughs> thought that was in the 60s here we have a little bit of an off strike and uh, but not anything drastic. See, to me, for this to really be right, you would want a little bit of issue with the in God we trust, but you have pretty much the whole we is there. So, what do you do, you know? Nice, Mickey Rob Banks found another W. Mickey, you're kicking butt, my friend. You're kicking some serious butt. I've looked through a couple boxes of quarters, and I've gotten frustrated. I, uh, you know, wanted to see if I could find them, just whatnot. And I don't videotape every last box that I look through. <coughs> but there's just nothing, you know. I found a bunch of uh, D, but what do you do? <laughs> Vicky C. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, Vicky playing the perv. That's too funny. Four boxes of quarters. Ooh. See, I, I that that just kills me. I, I did two, you know, going through two boxes of pennies. Like I did that yesterday, the Brinks 
versus Loomis, which is actually really cool that it happened organically like that. I didn't know that the one bank had a different carrier. I figured since they were across the street, they'd have the same armored truck service, and they didn't. And that's how we got Brinks versus Loomis. And I'm going to see if I can um, really get a nice relationship going with the second bank. Maybe open a small account there. <coughs> Excuse me. And, you know, like I said, do something. Bring in some donuts or milk and cookies or whatnot and get that, that relationship going. Because you'll be surprised. A lot of times people say, well, I can't get coins in my area and I can't do this and I can't do that. Well, you really can. It's just being persistent and being you know, open and kind is the way to do it. In a few weeks, I'm going to get Platinum Library coins for my collection. Platinum Library coin? I don't know what that is. Ah, just for, okay. I was going to say, Mickey, man, you you really going through the boxes if you got through it that fast. Holy cow. But Mickey says, nope, I just looked at one. Oop. Yep, Starbucks gift cards work just as well. You know, just something that shows that you appreciate them and, you know, what they're doing because, quite frankly, they don't have to uh, give it to you, especially if you're not a member of the bank. Um, if you are a member, they can make it difficult on you to get stuff. If you, you know, they'll make you wait a long time. For the, and say, oh, the bolt can't be open yet, or the person's gone. So, you know, you, you just kind of got to feel things out and, and uh, go, oh, hey. Oh, wait. I don't think that is what I thought it was. I thought it was a 2009. I don't know why it's an 06. <laughs> World of Dragon coins when the new ones come out. Oh, that reminds me. World of Dragon. The Chinese one looks really nice. Um, unfortunately, Provident Metals changed their system. You can no longer use PayPal. And because of that, I haven't been using Provident, which really kind of bums me out. Mickey Rob's Banks. That's cool, man. Um, the reason I have the half, half dollar boxes I'm able to get is uh, the same thing, uh, Mickey. We established a relationship with the bank manager there, and you know, he's a really, really cool guy. All the people, actually, all the people that work at that bank are awesome, and they watch the show. They don't really say anything, but uh, you know, but when we see them, they always say that they've watched and seen what's going on. They're really stoked for the show. I thought that was going to be something special. That was just dirty, dirty, dirty coin there. I don't see any obvious silver in the side. And like I said, guys, you know I'm just looking for mostly silver tonight. Uh, JP Hatchet, my bank asked that I don't bring the coins back and then let them link for. Yep, uh, JP Hatchet, that is also one of the keys. Uh, Casey Red Dragon, do I think Atmex has better prices on coins? Um, I honestly think. If you keep an eye open at Atmex, sometimes you can get really good deals. Um, if you're buying bullion, they're awesome. You know, bullion and silver, some of their coins have a very high premium. And, uh, you know, you just kind of have to keep an eye open. But I think, is like I said, and I'll repeat myself on it, and that is their... Um, Bullion and, and silver, you can't go wrong with them. You can find some really cool stuff. Uh, mud swab, we have not found any silver this evening yet, my friend. And I'm kind of doing a fast search through these rolls. I'm just really looking to see if I have any uh, silver versus other stuff. I look at different stuff once in a while. Uh, Alistair Black, that's one of the things... See, here's one of the things that Alistair brought up that, that I have never brought up. Um, when you're doing these orders from places like Provident and stuff, 
you can get the great deal, but if you don't spend enough money, you got to spend ten dollars or so in shipping, and that all of a sudden kicks the price of your coin or silver up to a point where it's going to take quite a while to recover from a ten dollar premium in the sense of shipping because shipping is still a cost, you know. <clears throat> Good to have mud here. If you guys didn't know, Mud Swat's favorite coins are dimes. Mud is a fan of the dime. Hey, no problem, Vicky C. Hoping it'd be nice to see a dime tonight, but you know, hey, we're just doing this for fun. A little bit of Q and A. And then maybe in the next week, we will figure out some tiers. I'm thinking maybe $3 a roll. Um, at, and that is so that if something hits, it'll cover shipping and everything. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure. We might do something different. But I'm definitely going to continue the Brinks versus... Um, Loomis for pennies and I'm going to try to do it in the nickels and dimes and whatnot and instead of bank versus bank supplier versus supplier and just see what the averages are here and I was actually surprised that Loomis won because Brinks usually like I said in the half dollars I've been killing it with Brinks Yeah, Canadian Ryan, you do have to order in bigger bulk to, to save that money, you know, that extra on shipping. And I have to do that, you know, when I order for shows, it you got to order at least 100 bucks, which that's easy to do for a show. We give out a lot of silver and a lot of premium silver that, you know, is collectible versus just straight bullion or, or uh, generic rounds. Something looks weird about that. Oh, it's a... Is it me or is that just... It's missing something. Huh. It's probably corrosive damage. Welcome back, Vicky Seal the Firm. How about a seeded dime? Yeah. <laughs> I think if I found something like that, I'd, I'd, you know, the chances are so slim and next to none. What the? This dime almost has no copper looking edge. Look at that, guys. Kind of strange. That's just a 1990. It <laughs> looks like a Hitler dime. Oh, you mean this one here? That's the one, guys. That is, there's something going on with right here in the lip and in the chin. It's, there's, it's extra. It's kind of different. But I'm going to hold on to that. Ooh, we got another 2019 that looks really nice. Wow. Wow. Huh. Too weird. Piece of scotch bright. <laughs> All right. A seated dime, I think. You know, that'd be that'd be too insane. Oh, the one that I that looks corroded. Oh, oops. <laughs> I'm not gonna find that one. Rose Dragon. Why? What do you mean you're dead? That's not right. Alrighty. Ah. So looking at the edge here, no silver. Another thing you want to look for is thin, thin planchets. Like, check this out. 
that's pretty thin. When you look at the side at the edge. But then when you look under a scope, scope's gonna give you more perspective, but see how it thins out? We can see it under the scope. That's kind of a surprise because here I'll put one up next to it that's regular. And you can see that the one on the right actually is a little bit thinner. Tim Eisman says, I think I found an 85 dime misaligned die air with something possible doubling. Very cool, man. Oh. <laughs> right on, bros. You cracked me up. All right, guys. So no silver that we see here. And I'm not being a good coin roll hunter tonight. In all honesty, you should look at everything versus what I'm doing tonight. But I just wanted to have some fun. Adrian Chester. How you doing, Adrian? Welcome to the show. Good to have you here. Let's see here. Boom. You never want to give away. Well, you know what, Jason, on Sunday, you should be here and hang out. Yeah, there was definitely a difference, huh, Lady B? Um, be here on Sunday. We have a lot of giveaways during our half-dollar searches, and uh, they've been averaging over two ounces of silver recently. We have a, a initial one ounce that's given from the, the channel. And then uh, CM Silver donated an ounce last week that he won, a Geiger ounce, which was really nice. And then we also pulled a bonus silver, which ended up being three ounces of silver went to somebody in chat. And that was very, very cool. Jason Thomas says, I'll be there, love it. Yeah, we have a lot of fun with the half dollar searches. All right. Oh, and uh, like I said, in two days, we're going to be announcing the, uh, yeah, Canadian Ryan, exactly. Last week's industry and giveaway was epic. There's also a prize pack from Canadian Ryan that was put into the industry and giveaway, which was very, very generous of Fran Norman. So that is very cool. And then I added some cool stuff throughout the night. We do a draw out of the uh, the bag to see who gets a bonus, you know, um, if we can pull the silver or not, the, the grand prize. But there's always silver, everything from silver dimes up to 90% halves and 40 percenters. So it's really a lot of fun. At least I have fun. <laughs> yeah, Vic, that's one of the things we talk. Vicky says, I cannot hold a whole roll of coins in my hand like Raven does. Yeah, that's, uh, takes, takes talent. <laughs> it's practice. Especially the pennies and stuff, the bigger rolls. Dimes are a little bit easier, you know. But honestly, if I had the, the time to sit through and look at every dime, we might find a little bit more. What up, Jerry Mobley? How you doing? Uh, don't see any silver in here, ladies and gentlemen. But, oh, like I was saying, so we have a giveaway. The, the August giveaway is going to be in two days. And then shortly, ooh, wait a minute. Did we actually find something? Oh, man, I was fooled. Look at that. This thing. In some spots had a good amount. I didn't catch the copper as well. But uh, we have the September giveaway coming, and the August giveaway will be announced as well. So keep an eye out for that. But the... October one is going to be insane. Scott Jarvie has a dime with only half the torch 
and half the lettering and the date is one half the nine and the D only God and trust and the tears drop down. Wow, guys, that's pretty cool. If you get a chance, go over and check it out. Uh, Scott Jarvie has a pretty interesting sound, sounding dime that they found. And that's the thing I'm talking about before, guys. Honestly, I'm kind of doing myself a little bit of a disservice by not looking at every coin. If I was doing a video, I would definitely look at every single last coin. Hey, hey Bill Gibson with the $5 super chat. Thank you very much, my brother. I appreciate that. Oh, we got something tone. A little tonage here. And that's surprising. That tone quick. It's a 2018 D, but look at that, guys. You can see some cool colors in the Godry Trust area. Turn that a little bit. Wolf, bark, arf, gur, sniff, get on the board, the train, dogs. <laughs> that's too funny. Right on. All right, what happened here? Did I miss something? You know what, um, Jason Thomas, if I had a VIP section, I definitely would do that. But I don't have one. Um, to qualify for that, you got to have, I think, 30,000 subscribers to have members. I know Seeker has members, and he doesn't have anywhere near 30,000, but he was part of a beta test group and was really lucky to get that option um, it'd be cool guys we have penny dog with the 499 super chat getting on the train as well says woof <laughs> well thank you very much and as you guys know these super chats go to giveaways that we do <laughs> Trapstar 003. Yes. Well, this is live live with you guys hanging out. And uh, <laughs> you, you got me there in a way. It is, it is still a video. All right. So here's 2015. Has a very, very thick defined rim all the way around. That thing is very well punched. Very, very cool. All right. <laughs> Trap star. Uh-oh. Maria Cervantes' birthday is next week, September 5th. Look out. Maria is 53 years young. She's on the prowl. Look out. Prenatal day delirium. <laughs> what? Uh... I just caught I just caught a dime with my belly. That's too funny. Too funny. All righty. Yes, definitely happy early birthday. Jack's Attack, 9-11, go Virgo. <laughs> right on. You know, it's funny about birthdays and whatnot. Um, out of my supposed really friend, really close friends, there's only one of my, uh, not one of my, but let's see, one, two, three people that remembered this year. <laughs> but as you get older, people get busy. They got things to do. I'm sure I'll get some some laters. All right. Let's see, guys. So no silver. And trying to see what the heck. We got a coin here. It looks like somebody tried to... Oh, now I lost it. Ah, uh, here it is. Somebody tried to twist the edge off. Look at that. They're angry at this little dime. <laughs> what do you do, right? Alrighty.
I think the next one. What do you guys think next week? Uh, next Thursday. Um, do you want to stick with dimes or a different denomination like quarters? Um, I didn't do quarters because I know there's other people that have been doing a lot of W quarter searching. And I've been trying. It's hard, really hard in our our genre of collecting and whatnot to find something that somebody hasn't already talked about or an idea that somebody hasn't already be, already done. And so, you know, I thought dimes was cool. I still need to think of a tier that works. Um, but I thought maybe quarters would be a little bit fun. Uh, Jack's attacks, 9/11. You know, it, it, and it happens. Like this was a while back. You know, I'm and I'm not saying when my birthday was. I was just talking about birthdays. But um, it was funny that you know people that normally normally say happy birthday, they just didn't have the time. <laughs> Chasing the gold says they've been 29 for 12 years. <laughs> oh, okay, King's coins. We will do nickels next week. Looking for some more nickels. Whoa! Huh. The nickel and the Buffalo Soldier. Hey, um, <clears throat> Vicky C. Guys, I did a I did a song the other day, and unfortunately, it got blocked. And the only person that got to listen to it was Vicky C. of the Fam. But it was Mama, I'm Coming Home by Ozzy Osbourne. And it, well, Vicky can tell you what she thinks about it. Um, but unfortunately, that's one of the reasons why sometimes it takes me a while to put out a song. I'll get blocked three or four times. Can anybody tell me what it costs to start a YouTube channel? Jerry Mobley? Um, it really only costs your phone or, you know, if you want to go buy a, uh, dedicated camera, but starting a YouTube channel does not really cost much, doesn't have much investment. It depends on what you want to do with the channel. That will be the money part, you know, if you're wanting to do certain things or whatnot. Uh oh, other people are saying, I smell dirty nickels. Yeah, what's up? Full push metal in the house. Good to see a full push. But um Yeah, I think we will. We'll do nickels next week cuz I think it'll be fun. Yeah, Rose Dragon, it's just um I don't know. The Black Sabbath songs don't seem to be block get blocked. But sometimes uh, other songs do. It depends on who the record company is. And I think when they were Black Sabbath, they were on a different label. But with um, Mama, I'm Coming Home, they're on Sony's uh, label. So let's see here. But too cool. So that's why, you know, and, and even I'm when I put out any of the songs, I, I don't own any of the rights or anything, you know. <laughs> the first nickel I find silver, give it to Jason Thomas. Jason Thomas, you got to be here for it, and we have a bot that does the giveaways. So, you know, if you're active in the stream and whatnot, the bot just may take a liking to you and recently it's like trap star and dizzy's giraffes has won a couple weeks in a row and uh, it's been kind of cool <laughs> ncf is baiting me that's funny times have changed and times are strange here i come but i ain't the same mama i'm coming home Time's gone by, it seems to be, you could have been a better friend to me. 
Mama, I'm coming home. Yeah, that song. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see here. But it, it turned out pretty good. Yep. Mama, I'm coming home. Maybe I could karaoke it and get away with it, but but yeah, but for now I got blocked. But it was cool. It was actually something that Vicky C had asked one of the songs she had requested, so I made sure that she at least got to hear the recording. And uh, you know. Housequake by Prince. Oh no, <laughs> NCF Prince is not in my wheelhouse, my friend. His voice, he's so high pitch. I just, most of his stuff I can't even attempt, my brother. Yeah, it, it and it's and it's weird because you can have like I have other Ozzy um, stuff, you know. I've done Black Sabbath. I did War Pigs, and I did uh, Hand of Doom. Same artist, but you know, different band, different record company, different label. And I'm not a hundred percent sure why it gets through or why it doesn't. You know, In Singer, Backstreet Boys. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh, man. But War Pigs, that's a fun song. And that's one of those songs that you really, really have to be um, boom to do. You know, you have to be confident and strong in your voice. Uh, guys, I know I haven't shown anything under the scope here in the last couple minutes, but hey. No way. Look at this. We got a 2009. Ha <laughs> ha. That's too crazy. We found an 09 dime. And you know what? There's a chance there's other 09s in there, my friends. Ah. It's super rare. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to check it out sometime. What the? Wait a minute. <coughs> I just thought I saw something weird on a dime. And sometimes things don't register the very second that I see them. Huh. <coughs> Excuse me. Whew. But see, that goes to show you that had I been looking, I probably might have found more than one 2009 tonight, you know? So that is crazy. All right. And all you guys that are playing the Raven Relic game, Bill Gibson and his masterful art of negotiation has got the increase to 8,000 so you can save up even more relics you just never know what you're going to get all right yep that is true rose dragging you're right on it you know what rose that happens a lot in uh youtube there's people that are just straight plagiarists you know, they, they see your video, they copy it, and sometimes, unfortunately, it's even really big channels that do it to small channels, and that big channel gets all the views, and the small channel, you know, they just get left in the cold. And it's cool that there's some people like Rob Finds Treasure, you know, he does some pretty legit stuff. He's shown people's, other people's finds and whatnot. You know, Mickey Rob's Banks got some good shout-outs. 
and that's good to see, but that doesn't always happen, you know. And you'll see somebody that has a really good idea, and that really good idea doesn't get, you know, uh, far for them, but it does with the bigger channel, and that bigger channel basically just, you know, took the idea, did the exact same thing. Here we go. This is a slightly off strike. This is interesting. Look at that, guys. Now, that one, that kind of thickness of off strike, I think, is worth keeping in the sense of having that extra rim versus the one earlier had it, but it was really, really light. This one is pretty prominent. Very cool. Jason Thomas is asking for a Mike Barney shout out. Who's Mike Barney, my friend? I do not know who Mike Barney is, but uh, we're shouting him out. Go check out Mike Barney. Hopefully he is a good dude. <laughs> All right, we're getting to this last roll. We're going to go through it. I don't see any silver. But hey, you know what, guys? It was very fun to get on here with you. We had an hour and a half of just hanging out. And I know that normally there's something that's being given away. But because tonight we had some extra donations and whatnot, we're going to make sure Sunday is just that much more fun and uh, enjoy each other's company. Hopefully we'll find some silver. You just never know. But hey, you know what's kind of crazy is to find a 2009 in here. And uh, you guys know I've kind of, I've, I've kind of cherry-picked which roles I will look at because... For the most part, everything in here is super modern. Uh, but cool to find that 2009 because I did look at a lot of dimes already this evening. Yeah, let's see here. All right. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to do something. I'm going to do a giveaway anyways. I feel... Like, why not? You guys kick it with me for an hour or so. So let's do this. Give me just a second to put all this away. And uh, I will. Hey, um, NCF, you know what? Is, or who said you can't copyright yourself? Um, I, You know what? You do have to do it in papers. I had to do it myself. In college, they made me actually um, reference myself. What's up, Michelle Ibarola? How you doing? We are going to do this. I'll tell you what. I'm going to give away the 2009 Philly along with... This silver tone dime here. It's a 1959. And it is a Philly. So we are going to do a quick giveaway for everybody. <coughs> Give me just one second here to set up the bot. It's going to be one entry. For a thousand relics. I'm going to do that right now. Alrighty. Alright. Open giveaway. You got three minutes, guys. And I will reward the room with a thousand relics so that you get your one entry. But it costs one entry, one 1,000 relics to enter. 
We're giving away a silver dime and a 2009 Philly. They're going together. Hopefully I didn't put the 2009 in the wrong spot. Is this it? There it is. All right. So these two are going together absolutely free. I hadn't planned on having a giveaway tonight, actually, guys, but I figure, you know, it's fun. You guys came in. We had a nice crowd here and there. I know it's not as exciting when we're not hunting uh, half dollars, but I like to have fun with you guys. And like I said before, it's not always about making money. It's about getting to know each other and having fun. And, uh, you know, I learn from you guys. You learn from me. All right, so here we go. EOS 8-29-19. All righty. So we have a minute and a half left until the giveaway. I'm going to go and wash my hands real quick. I'll be right back, guys. And then I'm actually just right here, but... All right. <clears throat> I also want to say a special thank you to my mods, Vicky C of the Fam, Bob's Coins, Rose Dragon, D Mr. Dirty Nichols himself, Dom. Very, very cool. Uh, one, one entry coin silver. That's all we did. All right. So let's see here. We have 43 seconds. So I put a max of entries of one. And uh, full push medals, yes. Jason Thomas put a exclamation part, uh, exclamation point, type enter, and then space, and then one. And that will give you your entry. I already gave out relics, so you should have enough. I'm going to do it one more time, but there's not much time left, guys. There's literally only 10 seconds left, so go ahead and try to get your entry. If not... <clears throat> Make sure you return on Sunday. We will have a bunch of stuff for our giveaway on Sunday. All right, so that is it, guys. No more entries. Here we go. And the winner is going to be in three, oops, two, one. And that is Tim Eisman. Congratulations to Tim Eisman. Very, very cool. All right, Tim. Good job. Very, very cool. Tim, make sure that you email me at ravenhawkcoins at gmail.com with your information. And that will get mailed out to you within the next week, give or take. So very, very cool. I want to say thank you again to all my mods. Alistair Black doing a photo shoot on Sunday. Alistair, well, hopefully uh, you're able to make it. But congratulations to Tim. Good to see everybody here. Mud Swat, good to have you here, brother. Uh, we're going to go through this. We got Captain Kirk, Deborah Walls, Mud Swat, Penny Dog, Bill Gibson, Mickey Robs Bank, Chasing the Gold. Coin Silver, Canadian Ryan, Lady B, Tim Eisman, Captain Kirk, Mr. Dearborn, Alistair Black, NCF, Scott Jarvie, Jax, Attacks in the house as well. If I missed anybody, I apologize. But hey, I'm just a person. I'm only human after all. Don't put your blame on me. <laughs> all right, guys. Like always, please take care of each other. Raven Hot Coins. Have a great day.